And please welcome my replacement for today's intro and outro, Baby Gray. Hello, other buddy. Hello. My name is Gray. Welcome. One out. Sadly, Baby Gray would not actually be playing the game as he lacks the coordination and brain skills, but we're getting him there. We're getting him there. We have sort of introduced him to King's Quest V a little bit. Uh, he, he, uh, he was able to steer Graham around a little. So we'll start him on the easy games, then we'll work our way up to King's Quest VI. How about that? Anyway, here we are in the catacombs. Um, I could just download a map, and it might even be in the official manual. I'm not sure. I don't think it is. I think you have to actually sort of map it out on your own. But uh, there's full of a lot of pitfalls, and I think it's a two-level catacombs dungeon. It's it's a wreck, but I think I remember most of the way. Oh, hi, Batty. Oh, oh wait, we gotta talk to stuff. The torch does not reply. The walls do not respond. The occupant of the stone bed is beyond the reach of Alexander's voice. Uh, there's not really a lot to talk here. The archway? Perhaps Alexander should determine what's on the other side of the doorway before calling through it. Oh boy, that means there's lots of secrets and awful nasty things. Niches in the wall form stone burial beds. Ancient bones lie crumbling on the unyielding rock. What was that? Alexander hears the distant sounds of a wild animal somewhere in the maze of rooms. That used to scare the crap out of me because I... I, honestly, I don't remember if the Minotaur actually does wander the maze ready to kill you at a moment's notice, or if it's just a fake out and the Minotaur is only waiting in the final room. But, eh, spoilers, we're getting ahead of ourselves. It was either up or down here. One way leads to death, one way leads to something I need. As he walks through the doorway, Alexander gets a very bad feeling about this room. Well, there's a giant pit there. You should probably not step on that. You should probably not have stepped upon the room of emptiness in the well-lit room, Alex. Tickets up. Next. Don't just wander, Alexander. Let your conscience be your guide. Oh, so I guess the map actually is in the manual, which I don't have, so uh, muscle memory, don't fail me now. Aha, stuff. Moldy skeletons, delicious. The lost souls cannot hear Alexander. Those jawbones have long been silent. The remains of several unfortunate souls haunt the room. These bones seem more recent than the ancient catacomb bones that Alexander has seen so far. Perhaps they were victims of the Minotaur, or perhaps they died while wandering lost in the maze. Three of the skeletons are completely intact. If they actually died wandering around in the maze, they made it literally about 20 feet into it before just giving up, slumping against the wall and slowly dying. The entrance is right back that way. Did you even try? A lone skull lies on the ground among the skeletons. Where the skull came from is a mystery, since the other remains seem to have their skulls intact. Well, we need a skull for some magicin. Alexander picks up the skull. Okay, so we needed that. Somewhere through the rest of this maze is a puzzle room. I don't really remember, so let's hope it comes back to me. If not, I'm dead. Yep, there it is. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, hi. An image of a rose has been carved into that tile. A carving of a scythe adorns that tile. That tile bears an engraving of a crown. That tile is engraved with a skull and crossbones. That tile bears the image of a dove. Okay, now I believe the solution to this puzzle is another one of those um, little rhymes in the guidebook we will look up. I've just saved, so what the heck. I wonder if I remember how to do this. Alexander feels the tile he's standing on shift beneath his feet. Uh-oh! Oh! That was sudden! Tickets up! Next! Three spikes and you're out! Haha. Uh -huh. Now, because it's kind of a small puzzle and I think it's just a matter of where you stand, you could probably brute force your way through it. 
Now I finally found the manual and it's really cool. I mean, it's like 30 pages long. It's ridiculous. But uh, all the answers to the puzzles are locked within their pages. But the, the, but the manual is nice enough to let you know that this page contains copyright protection material. So that it kind of guides you to the right page to look for. And here's the map of the catacombs we were looking for. And the dark tiles kind of tell you where all the, uh, the traps are. So we're in this dark one right up here by the chain. Here we go. Here's the rhyme we're looking for. Three roses laid across the bower, a scythe for he who cuts the flower. A crown and dove, most noble race, thy bones make sacred this dread place. So three roses, scythe, crown, dove, bones. Scythe, crown, dove, bones. Done. Woo! All right, now where do we go? I'm, I'm fairly certain... Oh, I hear you. Don't worry about it. I know I you're there. Oh, well, there you are. Ah, you were a human only and not the monster himself. I heard you coming and thought you were the beast. Did my father send you here to save me? Why, yes, he did, but how did you... Hush, there is no time. I think I have discovered the Minotaur's secret exit from the catacombs. Follow me and we'll both be saved. Um, you don't sound like the professional voice actor caliber that the other people are. Um, I don't think you are... Can the genie get in here? I have no choice but to trust you. Aww. That's all. Where did she... You tricked me. Go! <laughs> oh, there it was. You only got to see the McGlintock once, but this indeed is Genie McGlintock. <laughs> no, thank you. I'll go this way. Hi again. There you are. Why do you not follow me? Do you wish for death by the Minotaur? Hurry, we can tarry no longer. Who are you? You're terrible. Wait a minute. Oddly, I, I can't find a credit for her anywhere. So this is just sort of a... Maybe they forgot to record a voice for her and they just have sort of a staffer around the office doing it? Somebody's mom? Uh. -huh. I love I love pissing her off. It's one of my... I love it. So, here you still are. You are a coward and a fool. I leave you to your fate. And I think that's the last we ever see of her, or him. <laughs> Alright, see, that's one of the more subtle genie ones, because the the eyes only glint that once, and if you miss it, you're like, Oh, okay, derp de derp. Oh, that voice is awful. I'm going to feel really bad if it's somebody important. Uh, ooh, the shield is mine. An old wooden shield hangs on the wall. Alexander can has? The shield does not speak. Does it come off? Alexander takes the shield from the wall. Right in my pants. Boop. All right, it's all starting to come back to me here a little bit. I'm pretty sure that's the way deeper into the catacombs that way, and there's another trap of some sort in there. But I always forget. And you can come back into the catacombs, I think. If you forget to grab anything, you can come and go as you please. And they remove all the traps, which is nice. Yeah, there they are. I used to think this was like the genie in disguise because the eyes are glinting, but if you take a closer look... Alexander notices that this skeleton has old coins over its eyes. That used to really confuse me, but that actually is a burial rite. And I think um, it's it's a Greek or a Latin thing, which I guess would make sense because it's Roman. Uh, it's called... It's basically you're giving the departed fare to give to Karen, the ferryman across the river Styx, so you can get across and not be doomed forever. So that's their way of giving you a couple of bucks to pay for your cab ride to heaven. How nice. Well, mine now. Alexander finds two coins on the skeleton's eyes. He takes the old coins. All right. I like that they're old and moldy, too. The two coins from the skeleton in the catacombs are extremely old and corroded. All right, well, I guess there's no nothing about it now. Let's go ahead and get that trap out of the way. 
Now there's a right way and a wrong way to do this trap. It's a trap. The doors have sealed Alexander inside. And the ceiling is coming down. All right, now rule number one of any kind of sort of James Bondish trap, never leave the, uh, the gears or the mechanisms to your trap exposed. The doors have been sealed shut. Alexander doesn't have time to try to force them open. Oh, gosh, it's like I haven't saved in so long. Whatever am I going to do? It's not like I want to see Alexander get crushed to death. Alexander's hands would be crushed to pieces in those gears. He can't stop them with his bare hands. Okay. Uh, let's see. Maybe I toss the skull in there. Yeah, that'll do it. Desperate to stop the crushing ceiling, Alexander throws a skull into the grinding gears. The skull is caught between two cogs. The gears shriek and shudder. The skull begins to bulge. Uh-oh! With a sudden lurch, the ceiling completes its descent. Nope. nope. Yikes! Yikes! Yeah, that's exactly what I would say when I'm being crushed. Or like a bug under a heel. Oh, yikes! Jeepies! That Golly. skull wasn't strong enough to endure the pressure. And neither is Alexander's. <laughs> Tickets up! Next! Alexander never was much good at squash. Ah, squash. I thought the skull actually worked. But then you lose the skull, and then you need that to complete the, uh, the puzzles and whatever, the spells. It's a tr and this but no worries, we have something much sturdier in the form of a brick from the Island of the Beast. In a desperate move, Alexander throws a brick into the grinding gears. The brick is caught between two cogs. The gears shriek and shudder. The mechanism grinds to a halt. The ceiling is stuck. The trap is sprung. I thought the trap is sprung means it goes off. These are cool looking. Can I actually see these? Alexander is standing in a trap room with a crushing ceiling. The mechanism that lowers the ceiling has been stopped, and the trap room now stands open. So is this like a viewing port for when the winged ones want to kill somebody that come over here and stand by the window and just watch? The gears are now silent. Stay up, ceiling! Good ceiling. <laughs> That's adorable. And I think now it's uh, you're fairly safe to get down to the lower catacombs from here. Uh, down's a dead end, so you gotta go up and over this way. There's a safe way down to the lower levels. Never mind. Sounds a trap floor. Ye gads, that's cold. Alexander seems to have fallen to a lower level of the catacombs. Wherever he is, the place sure is dark. Alexander can't even see his hand in front of his face. Alexander hears the scrabble of hooves in the dark room. Oh, he's in here with me. Uh, hello? Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm glad I didn't see that. Tickets. Oh. Next. Caught in the dark, Alexander? Oh my god, I forgot how harsh that was. Oh, but nothing like a little light to dispel a man's fears. It feels exactly like a tinderbox. Yeah, use it. There you go. Alexander takes the candle from his tinderbox and uses the flint in the box to light it. Aha! So that's why it's dark in here. A torch is out. Alexander lights the extinguished torch and puts his tinderbox away. Oh, I forgot to put it out first. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Now, the lower catacomb... Yeah, corm, the lower catacombs is the biggest problem. It's full of traps and there's a certain order of things you have to do it. I don't know. I remember going... Um, down and around, but then I think when I was older, I found a top way. I don't remember. Uh, hang on. I'll be with you in a second. Yeah, this is it. Alexander hears the sound of a wild beast again. This time, so loud that the creature itself seems to be in the same room with him. The noises are coming from the other side of the east wall. East wall, eh? 
Alexander examines the wall closely, but sees only a solid rock wall. This room forms a cul-de-sac with the dead-end wall to the east. Ooh, good real estate The sounds options. came from behind the dead-end wall. All right, so I used to think you could, like, put your ear to it, maybe? The cell-like rooms of the catacombs hold their tongues and do not reveal their secrets. But this is why we had to come down here with the hole in the wall. The hole in the wall has four legs and a curly tail. He's all limbs with only a hole for a body. But that doesn't make him any less whole. A bit of the wallflower's shyness seems to have rubbed off on the hole in the wall, for he remains mute. All right, sorry to do this, buddy. I know you like the outdoors and the garden and everything, but um, this cold, dark catacomb is your home now. Alexander puts the hole in the wall on the east wall. The hole in the wall trembles slightly with dread at the clammy feeling of the stones. Yep, you live here now. Suffer, suffer, suffer. Alexander peers through the hole in the wall and sees just another room in the catacombs. Aha! Aha! Not just another room at all. So that's why Alexander couldn't find the Minotaur's lair. At least Alexander now knows the lair exists, somewhere in the maze on the other side of this wall. Bye. While Alexander contemplates what he's just seen, the hole in the wall, frightened by the Minotaur, makes a run for it. Alexander hopes the little creature finds its way home to the Isle of Wonder. I wonder what a hole in the wall skeleton looks like. We'll have to come back here and find out when he inevitably dies. Now, this is really stupid. I mean, you just have to make your way to the other side of the wall. That's not a big deal. Uh, I think it's down... I think it's down around this way. But the Minotaur hides the secret button to his lair around the only piece of wall so covering in this entire place. He couldn't find a more conspicuous place to hide it if he had tried. Because you walk around the catacombs, yep, bare walls, bare walls, skeletons and torches, yada yada do. And then you make it here and you're like, gee golly whiz, I wonder where the secret entrance to the lair could possibly be. Must be the skeleton. Niches in the wall. Nope. A very beautiful, very dusty tapestry hangs on the wall. I wonder if this tapestry was always here, or maybe the Minotaur installed it himself, like he went to Ikea and got himself a cheap old tapestry just to hide the secret button? The red candy-like button. Hmm. This tapestry looks familiar. And if familiar. you don't see it through the hole in the wall, you don't put two and two together. Now let's see. I don't feel anything. Aha! A hidden latch. Alexander triggers the little latch. A secret door rolls open. Alrighty, let's do it. This is the, the voice of the Minotaur. I think Sir Grey Wolf. No! I beg of you! Please don't hurt me! Your struggles are useless. It's the Minotaur, and he's struggling with a winged one's girl. She must be Lady Celeste. So just for funsies, I looked at the IMDB, and the guy who plays the Minotaur is Townsend Coleman, the, the same guy who plays the Vizier, Shamir, Lord Azure, the, be the Beast, uh, the Ferryman, all that stuff. And this, this... It's such a stupid voice. I wonder what happens if we just kind of wait around. What What's he doing, anyway? Just trying to tie a knot? So I guess we'll take this opportunity to take a look around, since they don't really do anything. A monstrous altar towers in one corner of the room. Alexander shudders with revulsion at the thought of the rituals performed at that sacrificial table. Alexander has found the Minotaur's lair. The chamber has the rank smell of a beast's den, but a strange altar testifies to the Minotaur's evil intelligence. A pit has caved in the floor in one corner of the Minotaur's lair. Flames rise from the pit as though from the throat of a dragon trapped in the earth. The fire makes the lair unbearably hot. The Minotaur is a huge monstrous beast with cloven hooves and the head of a bull. 
A beautiful winged one girl is struggling for her life against the Minotaur. The skull of some large and unknown beast guards the east exit. A monster, Lady Celeste, looking desperately around the room for any possible means of escape, suddenly spots Alexander. I like how it's this way. Just do something and the game you forces there, your hand. Human. my lair. God, I hate this voice. I ask you to release your captive or suffer the consequences. <laughs> Never you die, human. As the Minotaur advances in attack, Alexander slowly backs away. And puts his back to the fire, I remember. Yeah. yeah Until dude. he can back away no more. Back away towards the exit, now, you fool. where to, little man? Oh god, burp. Do you have cabbage for lunch? Come on. Come on. Now you die. Stop trying to hit me and hit me. Oof. Oof. Uh Well, I guess they're missing that particular sound file. Tickets. Oh, next. There's something to be said for taking the bull by the horns, Alexander. All right, so let's be a little bit more proactive this time around. Hey, you, Minotaur. Excuse me. <laughs> Part. Pardon me, sir. Would you, would you mind stop uh, doing your unspeakable rituals, please? <laughs> looks wildly around the room for the source of the strange voice and spots Alexander. All right, take the bull by the horns. I got this. Alexander prepares to take on the Minotaur with his bare hands. Hand-to-hand -hand combat with a Minotaur is apparently not a great idea. How gory. All right, so let's try doing this a little bit more uh, wisely. Hey, Celeste. Alexander gallantly offers the lady his aid. You need a hand, my lady. Can I be of some assistance? <laughs> lady Alexander. Celeste looks... You there! Uh, maybe if we free Celeste, she can help me out. Alexander won't be able to do anything for the girl until he's taken care of that Minotaur. Hmm. I'll take care of the Minotaur, my lady. Have no fear. Now you die! Oh, come on, we were just having a conversation! All right, bull. This is it. Alexander prepares to take on the Minotaur with his bare hands. He steps forward bravely and is spotted by Lady Celeste. All right. Until Maybe we can talk him down. Wouldn't you like to let the girl and I go? Don't be a fool. All right. Well, the uh, the Spanish bullfighting music should probably be a little bit of a hint. We do have a red piece of cloth. All right, bully, 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 bully. Alexander. Look here, you bully. Nice, bright red. I didn't do that. Red. Now you die! Nope. The Minotaur drops from sight amidst the consuming flames. Slowly, his scream fades as well. Let's see if we can see that in slow-mo. Now Oh, interesting. I always thought the Minotaur hit the cloth and took it down with him, but apparently you can see there that he keeps the cloth. So I wonder if we still have it in our inventory. I'll have to look. And let's turn the speed back up. Have you been harmed, Lady Celeste? Are you alright? No, I am not alright. I assume you do not intend to leave me tied up on this vile monstrosity. Uh, of course not. Sorry, let's see. If you'll give me a moment, I'll have these untied in no time. I can't wait that long. Look, I wear a small dagger just inside my belt. It should be enough to cut the rope. Oh, all right. I, I've i got it, Lady Celeste. Here we go. Here you go, Webby. Thank you. You may keep the dagger as a gift for saving my life. That's very oh. generous. Forget it. Do you mind if we just get out of here now? 
I think that's the only time you get to see her character portrait. I don't think she has any more lines. Well, maybe she does out here. The winged one's guards, bored with the pointless waiting, are startled by the sound of rock moving against rock. Lady Celeste, quite thee well. I'm quite well, thanks to the bravery of a mere human. So much for your superior intellects. Yes, me lady. <laughs> now bring him along. I'm going home. Oh, bye, Crow. All right. Oh, these guys are never happy with me. I see you have proven yourself the hero of the prophecy. Well, I am expected to thank you for saving my daughter's life. So I thank you. I am obliged to thank you for the restoration of our sacred catacombs. It means much to our people. We have already begun the process of clearing the deadly traps from its rooms. It is also my duty to grant you a visit with the Oracle. So this I do. I will grant you the freedom to leave here unharmed, despite my orders to the contrary from the Crown. But there, my obligations to you end. I have no love for Alhazred. But he is my liege, and if Princess Kasima trusts him and wishes to wed him, my guards will take you to the Oracle now. When your time with her is through, I want you to leave the City of the Winged Ones and never return. I don't know who you are or what you want here, but I will not disobey my crown further. I thank you, Lord Azure. I will respect your wishes. Hail to thee, great oracle. Lord Azure sends you this wingless mail. It appears that he solved the cliffs of Lot. She's the oracle, she knows. Minotaur in his lair. So I have seen. So this is the one that haunts my pool of late. Welcome, young seeker. What knowledge do you desire? Princess Kasima, whatever you can tell me, great oracle. Ah, of course, the princess. That explains my images. Let us see what we can see. I've always been uh, curious about her hair. It looks like he's wearing a hat. Like a big fuzzy Russian I hat. I see a maiden, lovely and pure, but surrounded by evil. She is a rose set amidst bitter thorns. It is her fate to be the pawn of dark powers. And yours to try to redeem her. How? How do I redeem her? Fate is not like the cut of a blade, young one. But rather, like the myriad of paths formed when a hammer cracks ice. I will tell you what I can. But what will actually come to pass is up to you. I see that any attempt to reach the girl will force you into battle. A struggle against a dark force. If you lose, your life will be forfeit. Who must I fight? A great darkness surrounds your adversary, preventing me from seeing clearly. I can only make out the shape of a black cloak. But before this final struggle, I see an infiltration. A dangerous game of hide-and-seek in corridors filled with enemies. The risks are high, but it is the only way to reach the one you seek. There is more than one way into this place. Your choice will dictate much. What else do you see, mighty oracle? Oh, oh, such pain. I see two restless spirits crying out for revenge. These shades could help you destroy the dark force if they were to be brought back from their spiritual form. Yet this is only one possible path to your destiny. I'm afraid this is getting beyond me. I know very little about the afterlife. 
I can only advise getting counsel from the druids. Be warned. The druids are reclusive and dangerous. They might aid you, or they might destroy you. Like their island, the druids' nature is hidden in the mists. There is nothing more I can do for you, except to give you this. It is water from the sacred pool. That and my blessing go with you. Thank you, great oracle. Wow, that was a lot more telling than I remember. It's been so long since I've actually listened to the entire speech. Well, bye. Thank, uh, you're welcome for saving your, your monarchy. Okay, wow. We learned a lot. Uh, we also have the water, the sacred water, which we need for one of our spells. I think the rainwater spell. We also have to find falling water. I forget what that is. But she mentioned that there are multiple paths into the castle, and that will dictate a lot. And that's very true. There's two ways into the castle. One way gets you a crappy ending, which way, one way gets you the longer, better ending. And then there's a lot of uh, cat and mouse games, a lot of hiding. Yeah, I remember the end game, at least the, the longer version of the end game, being really, really good. I, again, it's King's Quest VI. It's one of the best adventure games ever made. So, of course, it's going to be great. And is yeah. Oh, I was just about to go back to the Island of the Crown to see if there was, uh, if that Jester guy had appeared back in the bookstore. But looks like a new island has popped up. The Island of Mists. Ooh. We're not ready quite to go back there yet, but I think we have a lot of what we need to accomplish just about everything in the islands. Maybe not the Isle of Wonder just yet, but definitely the Island of the Beast. Oh, wait, but before we go, I forgot, now that we have the tinderbox, we can go up there and see what was in that dark cave. If, you can, if you've forgotten anything from the catacombs, you can enter through the front or the back. It's, uh, it's a swigger that way. In we go. Do not click on the bushes by mistake. Alexander finds himself in a dark cave. All right, well, we'll fix that soon enough. Right, I can click properly. Alexander takes the candle from his tinder box and uses the flint in the box to light it. There we go. And it doesn't make anything any brighter. You still can't see anything more, but that's all you need to know that there's a hole here. There we go. The lighting in this part of the cave is better. Alexander extinguishes the candle's flame and places it back in his pack. There has to be a count somewhere that says how many times this poor narrator has to say the word Alexander. Imagine if Bill named his son Alexander. He's like, Alexander, come here. Alexander shit his pants once again. The smell is unbearable. A plant grows on the grassy ledge. Hmm, smells like peppermint. This is another thing that you can do to get the best of the best endings, but we'll come back to that. Let's grab some of this. Alexander takes a few leaves from the plant. As he does so, a strong smell of peppermint is released. Ah. 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 Other than a few bats, there doesn't seem to be anyone in the cave to converse with. Can we see anything out there? A natural window-like opening in the rock provides a view to the outside world. A peppermint plant grows on the window's ledge. What if we can crawl out there? I never tried that. The window in the rock is... No, okay, fine. Out we go. I think we can do this without the tinder box. Yeah, because then we got a little bit of natural light in here. And then we head for the only light source in the place. And look who's reappeared. It's our old pal, the guy whose name we actually don't know just yet in the canon of this playthrough. So in this episode, yes, we have come full circle from the bookshop all around the world back to the bookshop. Doesn't it always? All right, so next time I think we'll start talking to this gentleman and he is our key into the end game. Though I don't, we're not quite there yet, but this is, this is kind of important. So until then... Uh, well, speaking of book ending things, hey, Gray, come here and take it away. Say goodnight, Jelly Beans. Goodnight, Jelly Beans. Good night.